I'm here with Kat Kerr and Kat, I love art journaling and bookmaking and all that stuff and I know you do too. Oh my gosh. And because you have brought the cutest project which is these little tiny books with incredibly decorated covers. Absolutely. And the, you know, these these journals are addicting. The only problem was that they didn't come with a fun cover and so I thought why not make my own. So that's what I'm doing today. Why not indeed. Let's yeah. do it. So um, they come in all, you know, they're already packed with all of these pages and I'm just going to take one page out to show you comes out really easily and I'm going to use an epoxy clay and I do need um, two equal parts but before I start playing with it I'm just going to put on my other glove because I am using black and I just don't want to get it all over my hands. Now an epoxy clay is just a kind of clay that um, hardens once you mix the two parts and let it just sit out for a certain amount of time right? Right it takes about 24 hours for okay. it to completely cure. Oh so you but have some time to work with it. I was just going to say that's the beauty is that you do have a lot of time to work with it. And you, you know, you're gonna see in the next steps that we're going to embed things in it um, and you have plenty of time to play with. So here's my cover and I'm gonna take this uh, clay that I've already mixed up and you do wanna make sure that it's a solid color. Okay. And I'm just going to press it onto my cover. It seems like I could do it so far. It's so easy, right? <laughs> I mean, I thought this was going to take a lot longer the first mm -hmm. time I tried it, but it really doesn't take long at all. And I assume if for some reason you made too little clay, you could just add some more on. It's not a big deal. Like, you don't have to stress about it. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. You can, you can definitely do that. And normally I will, you see how I have some on the edges there? Yeah. I'm not worried about that either. I have some wax paper on the table here. I can just cut that right off so I oh. have a nice straight edge. So you're actually just using like the paper or plastic or whatever this is, chipboard to like yeah. cut. To cut it. Okay. That's a cool idea. And so now once you have it all um, covered except for the notches. Because you can't bind it, right? Right, you can't bind it <laughs> later on and you really want to be able to do that. So once you have it completely covered, this is where the fun really begins. And I'm going to first add some texture using these rubber texture plates and I'm going to press it into the clay but I don't want the clay to stick to my to my rubber okay. so I'm just going to add a little bit of this metallic powder. Magic gold dust. Yeah. Now if you didn't have a texture plate could you use a rubber stamp Absolutely. or like a natural item that you found? There's so many things that around the house that you can use and yeah you just press it into the clay there <gasps> and it just it leaves this so really cool. nice design and there's so many different metallic powders that you you can use whatever you and have. And I love that you didn't cover the whole thing with the same amount of powder, like some of it's darker, some of it's lighter. It's just so that the, it doesn't stick. That's right. It's just so it doesn't stick to your rubber. And once you have some texture on there, I found these really sweet little charms. It's a face and I knew that I wanted to put those in my cover. So I just press them onto the... Onto so you don't need any adhesive? No, because that's the great thing about the clay. It sticks to anything, except plastic. <laughs> um, but it pretty much sticks to anything. And so I'm just going to add my little embellishments. I have some arms here, some little legs. This is a great way to use up like missing earrings where you only have one. Oh, jewelry, yes. absolutely, absolutely. All that stuff. Oh, this is so cute already. Yeah, it comes with these little arms. Now, the first one I created, I had a little bezel yep. and I was able to use that as the body. But today I'm actually going to just use a little piece of wire and I'll just press that in there and that's it. I'm done. I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours okay. and then we'll move on to the next step cool. here. So as you can see, this one already has my little embellishments. It has my mm -hmm. um, it has my my components and everything. The next thing I'm going to do is just liven it up a little bit by adding some color. And I'm just taking some acrylic paint. Obviously, sky's the limit. You can use whatever you have at home. Uh, so you're just using a dry brush, you're not even using water to water right. it down, and you're just painting right over yeah. it. So you are, I notice, letting some of the gold still show through. You're yes. not like getting into every nook and cranny. And that's the reason why I personally chose the gold, because I did want it to peek through just a little bit. And so once that paint dries, I want to bring this up a little bit more. You want to give it something I want to give extra. A little bit extra. And so I went through my stash of fabric scraps and I just assembled a couple of layers of, you know, leftover trim. I put a little button on there because I want to be able to give her a little attitude. Oh, and 
and I love that you stitched it with this red thread because then it really shows. Yeah, yeah, just something to kind of make it pop. And just you don't a need bit. a lot to really have impact because I mean these are very tiny scraps of lace yes. and muslin and stuff, and it looks fabulous. And I don't know about you, but I have drawer full. I mean, <laughs> let's tons not talk about the of stash. fabric scraps. <laughs> so um, now we'll move on to assembling this and getting it okay. all finished. And I'm going to take this scrap. This is the one that I, I had already finished. Okay. I'll just take a little bit of glue, adhere it to my little uh, book there, and I'll finish it with a little bit of steel wool where I'll go over my little metal components and just kind of so bring the shine. So you're removing the paint a little bit from it. That's right, that's right. Just because I want to make sure that they don't get lost in the, in the paint. Okay. And um, I just finish it off by adding a little bit of metallic, and it really makes it sing, I think. It's beautiful. Yeah, so you can see on some of the samples, there's so many design possibilities. You can even make your own molds and you can use your elements on, on the cover of the book or you can completely customize them and make um, beautiful covered books like Erin Gerlach did here on these, absolutely beautiful. So this would be such a great gift to give to somebody. And do you mind grabbing one of those books for something so we can take a look at the inside? Sure. So this is so fun and I love how fat it is, it's full of stuff, but there is so much gorgeousness inside of here. I love all the book poetry. We are gonna definitely have to have you back <laughs> to talk about how you made the insides of these because these layers are just absolutely fabulous. This is this is so fun and it is so inspiring to me. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kat.